dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep in dreams you will lose your heartaches whatever you wish for you keep have faith in your dreams and someday your McDowell, and this is not my real hair. Um, I am here to talk to you today about something that I discovered as a person with an invisible illness called the princess mentality. And we're going to walk through what it's like to live with an invisible illness. And then we're going to look at how the princess mentality affected my growing up with an invisible illness. So you guys are going to ask, what, what do you have? And uh, I want to be really honest and upfront with you guys. Um, I have a genetic hypersensitivity disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I have a slide, but I'll show you it later. And ehlers danlos Syndrome is an issue, it affects your production of collagen. And I'm an actress and a singer, and I'm really good at memorizing things. But when I get exposed to gluten or dairy or any other sort of inflammatory foods, I end up with this crazy side effect that everyone with ehlers danlos Syndrome gets, EDS, called brain fog. And I'm sure you guys feel like you understand brain fog, but what I'm experiencing right now is that I could read you an 18 minute speech, usually, without any effort. But today, every time I try to think of the first word, it's just not there. Or I try to think of the next word, it's just not there. So what I do when I'm upset and I'm freaked out about not being able to think is I sing. A dream is a wish your heart makes and I try to hold on to the hope of my dreams and know that I'm gonna get to the other side of this really annoying side effect and I'll be okay so a genetic hypersensitivity disorder causes issues with your connective tissues so my the reason that food and me have allergy issues is that the connective tissues in my intestines, your intestines, a normal person, no one's normal, but a normal person's <laughs> intestines will be like this. So they eat bad food and it just sort of stays in their tummy. My intestines don't have the proper collagen, so they kind of look like this. I eat gluten, it goes right through and into my bloodstream. And my insides poof up. And just like my belly will become about this big, well, this big, um, my brain is pooping up. But there's only so many places that your brain can go when it's inflamed. So that's why you get brain fog. Or start to feel like a princess trapped in a tower. And you're like, oh, I just need to get out of here. I can't do it. It's so much. But Chronic pain that comes from having EDS and constantly having to deal with symptom suppression, like I have to with EDS, I think was kind of a blessing in disguise because 
I really rely on stories to feel better. I see them as that like guiding light. They're my way out. So I joke all the time because I'm um, I'm probably like 65% Peter Pan, like 25% Cinderella, that I have like a, a gang of lost boys. And so if we're going to extend on this metaphor, my lost boys and I will run around our island playing follow the leader for days and days and days and never go anywhere because it's never, never land. And that's fun and we just keep doing that and doing that. But at some point, we're going to be like, what's the point? Why am I here? What am I doing? And that's where dreams come into the picture. And Walt Disney was uh, really big on dreams. He actually loved dreams. That's what he built his entire empire on, with stories and dreams and having an idea of like, I want to build a giant train set. And then building it and having it and running around on it. So I'm going to tell you my dream. My dream, I have lots of them, but my dream is to be a combo of Walt Disney, Steve Jobs, and John Lasseter, but with boobs. <laughs> so I want to be the first female, like live entertainment empire, whatever, what have you. I want to have theaters where kids can go and take a dance lesson or take a music class or see a show where there's actual real life people on stage that they can reach out and be like, oh, they're there. So we're not just interacting with screens. So that's my dream. And every day I wake up and my feet are swollen or my head hurts and I have a migraine or another side effect of EDS is a uh, hypermobility. So your joints move really quickly. Let's all do a test. Everyone hold out your hand. You're going to reach for your thumb and I want you to try and pull it towards your arm. Most of you are going to stop about here. Hypermobile people can get their finger to touch their arm. Whee! If you can do that, don't worry. It doesn't mean you necessarily have EDS. You're not doomed for life. Um, but if you do also get migraines or constantly feel like you're spraining your ankles or your knees are coming dislocated or you have like a weird side pain that you don't understand, maybe go to a doctor and get it checked out. Um, that weird side pain is one of my like three most extreme stories that I deal with with a chronic pain condition and that's uh, rib slipping. So the ligaments that hold your ribs in place actually hold them in place. Mine I lay down to cuddle with someone, and they're like, JK, and then they poke me in the lung. And then I have to wait and push them back in. Or sometimes, same with my kneecaps, I'll be laying, trying to like cuddle next to someone, and just, whoop, they just slip out of place. Um, it's really uncomfortable. But like I said, there is no reason to give up hope. Because if you have a dream, then you have something that's going to be your treasure map, your road map, your like, way to light your way through what you've got to do. Uh, yeah, so you would think that as someone who's obsessed with Disney princesses, I would be really into the idea of like, someday my prince will come, someday I'll find my love and how thrilling that moment will be. But I'm not. It's not my thing. Um, especially because growing up, I've decided that that phrase in my life actually became someday my doctor will come. And so I see a lot of people who, like me, are dealing with whatever their invisible illness is, mental illness, um, there's a variety of invisible illnesses falling into a victim mentality. And I'm here to tell you, it's not worth it. There is no reason to play the victim because dreams are infinite. You can pick one and just go for it. And then you're like, well, this is lame. And then you can pick another and just go for it. And then you're like, this is lame. Pick another, go for it. But if you've decided that you're going to inhabit this like persona of like, someone needs to save me and I'm so upset and I'm so trapped by my circumstances and I don't know what to do, that is going to become your reality. So I don't want anyone who's sitting here at the end of this talk 
to be like, oh, that poor sick girl, just because I'm in chronic pain every day. And there's no cure for EDS, so I probably will be for the rest of my life. Um, I want them to go, oh my gosh, that girl who came on in a wig and sang like a Disney princess and then took it off and like looked like a boy and um, <laughs> kept singing like a Disney princess, like she's got some like, um, what's a not bad word? <laughs> really cool dreams <laughs> and aspirations. I want to be known for my dreams and aspirations. And I got really into this concept because I am, or I was, an elementary school integrative art teacher. And like we said before, I was a storytelling major, I was an integrative art teacher, and I'm also a feng shui consultant. So everything I do is about asking people, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And then watching children, elementary schoolers, like shrivel up and watching adults that I consult for kind of go like, what do you mean, what do I want? They can't answer that. I'm like, do you want love? Do you want money? I mean, feng shui is really basic. It's like, you want love? I'll make it so you have love. You want money? I'll make it so you have money. Um, with children, though, I thought they'd be able to come up with all these ideas, and they, they don't anymore. They don't have the tools to dream. So I'm going to give you the tools to dream today using our outline that I would use with the children. So the way that I look at stories is you have the beginning, and this is the who, what, where, when, why. So I would tell the kids, like, we're going to do Moana today. Raise your hand if you've seen Moana. Awesome. So um, who, what's the who, what, where, when, why of Moana? Uh, the main character, the female, Moana. Yep. Who, where? Where is she on an island but wants to get off the island? Okay. Do you know the name of the island? It's okay. The who, what, where, when, why, when, and why are the first thing that we would cover with the kids. And then we would discuss the next part of any plot because everyone has to establish where it's happening and then there's a rising action. So we would discuss the rising action. So the impetus for Moana to do something is that her island is dying. That's the rising action. And then she sings a whole song about wanting to leave and then tries to leave. And then the first complication happens, and she almost drowns and goes back. And then the next complication happens, which is she can't find the guy she needs with the stick she needs to get the thing she needs. And then the complications, yeah, I know. Um, the complications keep going and going and going until, in any story, you get to the climax. The climax in Moana is that she is all alone. Everyone has left her, and she's decided she's going to complete the mission all by herself. So when we would do this in a class, we would look at beginning, rising action, complications, the climax, and this is where they'd get to like fight if we were like doing kid scenes, and they loved that. And then we would look at the end. And what was beautiful about how we did it in class is we would do every single story in the MUR, and we would start at the beginning on the stage, and then we would go jump off the stage, rising action, end up at our first complication, meet our first sidekick, meet our second sidekick, meet our second complication, meet our third complication, and then we would go right into the middle where the climax would happen, and then I'd yell, where do we go next? Does anyone know where we would go next? We would go back to the stage, because all stories are just taking us from one beginning through a set of circumstances, usually hard and difficult, back to where we started. And if you can hold on to whatever that thing is where you started, i.e. your dream, for example in Moana, she wanted to save her island, then when you make it back, you get to either expand on that dream or that dream tells you where you're going next. But you're always going to be able to come home to that stage and rely on that dream. So what I want to reiterate is, yes, I'm a sick person. That sucks. Um, it doesn't define me. The, the Disney stories that I grew up singing made me realize that 
the dreams that you wish will